All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on our second part of Reconstruction um, Unit. So once again, today we'll be focusing on the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment um, of the Reconstruction. So guys, once again, one thing I want you guys to remember, remember that Reconstruction is from 1865 to 1877. And the reason why 1877 it ends is because all the military Union soldiers that were sent to the South to enforce the laws are going to go back to their homes in the North. And then that's when everything goes downhill. But we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But I just want to make sure you understand that. In 1877, all the soldiers from the north leave the south. And nobody's there to protect these African Americans. Alright. So here we go. Moving on. So key points for today's lesson. Freeman's Bureau. I went over it yesterday. But I'm going to go more in depth today. Uh, what is the 13th Amendment? I've already gone over that this year. 14th. I've gone over that this year already. 15th Amendment. i also gone over that this year. But now we're going more in depth and more detailed with this um, amendments. And last but not least, how do you think southern states are going to feel about these amendments being passed? Are they going to want to follow them? So that's a big question, right? These southerners that are very proud southerners, white power type of mentality, are they going to want to give power to these African Americans once they are granted these um, amendments? So we'll talk more about that in a bit. So um, the KKK, all right, so Ku Klux Klan, <clears throat> white terrorist group that tried to frighten African Americans, so they won't, so they would not vote. So this organization was made for a couple of reasons to, you know, intimidate uh, black people back then to know that they're not powerful, that white people are powerful. Also to intimidate them not to vote, all right. They would go warn them like, you better not vote, or if you vote, you better vote for this person. So it's very intimidating to these African Americans, which we'll talk more in a bit. But sometimes um, African Americans would be beaten to death. Um, and the Southerners just want to show that they're in power. That even though the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment gave African Americans power, that those power is it's not going to be as much as a white people. All right? The white people wanted to make sure that, um, that they're the ones in power and they're the ones that have um, every right to do whatever they want and they would intimidate these black people to do things for them which we'll talk more about so I'm gonna go on to our next slide so Ruben asked a really good question he said he wanted me to go more in depth about my professor because my professor in um, high school I mean I'm sorry my professor in high school my professor in college I'm sorry about that um, he had told me a story now you gotta keep in mind my professor was probably born in the 1940s so he's an old dude um, and he told me when he was a young kid I want to say maybe in the 50s he said that he was, I can't remember the state he was by. I want to say it's some state in the south, either Alabama or Virginia, one of those. <clears throat> and he said that um, him and his parents were driving through um, a roadblock at night. And there's a there's these um, people, um, they're KKK members, and they have a flashlight. And they're saying, keep going by, keep going by, right? And all the cars are going nice and slow. And then to the right, he said when he was a kid, he saw... These two men, African American men, being lynched. Lynched means being hanged, all right. And and they're just you know the flashlights are going, and so people can see um, what happened to these black people. So my 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 professor said when he was a kid he was frightened to death. He was scared. He didn't know what the heck to do. And the big question he kept asking is like, I mean, how are these people doing this? And there's no police officers to protect these African Americans, right? So these white people, these KKK members that obviously had their mask on, they were trying to intimidate people that lived in that county or that region of the South so they understand that the white people or the KKK are in charge in that area of um, where they were living. And when he said, like, I wonder where these police officers are, right? So this is what kind of what it is, right? So you have these KKK members with their mask. They're there to intimidate people. Um, and... and what I wanted to tell you is this, right? When he said, where are these police officers at? Well, you got to think about it, right? The KKK members are the police officers. They're the ones that are doing this. So imagine if you're an African-American living in the South and white people are intimidating you or they're trying to kill you. You go to the police officers. The police officers are not going to help you because there are a bunch of white police officers that are part of the KKK organization. So... That's kind of what it is back then, what's going on for these African Americans. It's very sad to know that nobody could protect them. Once 1877 emerges, I mean, there's no Union soldiers to protect these um, these African Americans in the South. So that was the story I wanted to tell you guys. Um, but it was crazy when he told me that. My professor was like a, a Forrest Gump. Like, he lived through all these cool um, time frames in history. So that's a photo right there. Our next one, this is a crazy photo, though. 
So there's a photo taken probably like in the 50s, 60s, around there. And then you have these two African Americans being hung, right? And you can see everybody. Some people do feel pretty bad and pity for these people that are being hung. But you see this guy right here. He guy's smiling. This guy and this this female right here. They they don't really care too much. They're probably encouraging this. These other men in the back as well. They're also smirking, and smiling. So that's kind of what it was in the 50s and 60s. That's why Martin Luther King Jr. fought so hard for civil rights to um, be treated equally. But man, th this is how it was. So this is like almost a hundred years after the Civil War, and this is what people are doing in the South. That's why it's such a crazy thing. And maybe fast forward 50 years later, we're in 2000s right now. So, like, it, has it really changed much? I mean, yes, yeah, not as much murder and stuff like that. But there's still a lot of racism in the United States, you know, even though, I mean, that's the truth of it. And last but not least, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, there's cops, right, back then. And these cops are the KKK members, so there's not really going to do much to protect you. So I just want to let you know about that story. Good job, Ruben, for letting me know that. I'm glad that you asked those questions. I can always say, um, say those in my PowerPoints. All right, moving on. So it's a key word, scallywag <laughs> is a funny word. Uh, Southerners who joined the Republican Party during Reconstruction. So this is a little illustration or a poster. It says the Louisiana scallywags. So this man was a politician um, that was for the Confederacy when the Civil War emerged. But after the Civil War ends, he's going to be part of the Republican Party, which is the Northern Party. So he's going to be seen as a traitor. So to make fun of him or to intimidate him, the Southerners will call him a scallywag. It's kind of like you're in a gang and then you just leave your gang to go to another gang. They're going to call you names and tell you stuff. That's exactly what the Southerners are going to do. They're going to call this guy a scallywag. So a scallywag is something to really, it's a disrespectful word that they will use back then if you went against the Southern Democratic Party. So if you're a Southerner and you join the Republican Party, they will call you a scallywag. All right, moving on. Carpetbaggers, this one's really easy. If you think about it, these are the northerners that moved to the south. For instance, like the Freeman's Bureau or the Union soldiers were sent to the south um, to help the former slaves be free and give free education. Um, they will be known as carpetbaggers. And the reason why they call them carpetbaggers is because on the left side of this photo, you can see this is kind of their luggage back then. This is where they will put their clothes. So they will come down from the Union or from the north to the south with these carpet bags. So all the Southerners would call them carpetbaggers. Like, get out of here, you carpetbagger. Go back where you're from. Um, they didn't want them in the South. So that's what it looks like. And you can see this photo right here. You have a carpetbagger, and he's obviously bringing all his luggage to the South. He's probably going to provide free education. Just like it says, many of them work for the Freeman's Bureau. So that's what it is, a carpetbagger. Next, we have the Freeman's Bureau. Like I said, when you see Freeman's Bureau, um, the ED and Freed, can also stand for education, so always remember that. So the Freeman's Bureau, a group of people in the government that helped free slaves during Reconstruction and provided free education to former slaves. It also gave them free food, free shelter, and even helped them uh, apply job skills, things that they needed to learn how to knit or you know how to fix things because all these African Americans, all they ever knew was how to grow crops and be farmers. So they're trying to show them these soft skills to be successful because um, they don't have to be slaves or work in farms anymore. They don't want to. So you see the little the female here teaching African Americans how to read, write. Um, and then you have this general, this Union soldier right here protecting the African Americans from the white Southerners. So like I said, after the Civil War ends, I mean, it's unfortunate, but if Lincoln would have not been assassinated, Maybe we wouldn't have seen all these bad things happening because Mr. Lincoln would not allow the radical Republicans to take over Congress. Because like I said, Abraham Lincoln wanted to forgive and forget. And once he passes away, there's nothing but a bunch of radical Republicans that don't want to forgive the South for what they did. So that's that's kind of what it looks like. So if you pass forward 100 years later, you were in 1960s, and it's still the same thing, whites versus blacks. And I mean, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, these are all these people that emerged. They're still fighting for their civil rights. Even though they have their 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, they're still trying to um, fight to be treated equally and fairly. All right, so the Freeman's Bureau, once again, it gives free education, and then it gives free food and shelter, and also allows them to learn skills to get jobs in the future. All right, moving on. So 13th Amendment, it's really easy to always remember the 13th Amendment. Remember the word amendment means change to our government. So what did the 13th Amendment do to our government? It's going to allow 
freedom to all slaves. And the way you always remember it, the 13 looks like handcuffs being uncuffed because they're going to free these slaves, all right? So they freed them in 1865. So once the Civil War ends, they're going to liberate and free these slaves. So it abolished slavery in the USA, made it illegal in all the states of America. So all 50 states or states at the time have to follow this law, all right? So that's the 13th Amendment. Now, once you're free, you need to become a citizen, all right? So the 14th Amendment is going to be passed in 1868, and it gave, gave citizenship to everyone who was born or naturalized in the USA. So once again, it's going to um, allow you to have naturalization and citizenship. So think about it. Once you're free, once you have citizenship, when people become citizens of America, what's the following thing or the next step? You can now have the right to what? And that's the f number 15, right? The 15th Amendment. Um, I I'm sorry, one more thing. So states must give equal protection under the law to all people, not only citizens. And states may not take away anyone's rights to life, liberty, and happiness without due process of law or court trial. So it's against the law to deny any African-American citizenship in America. And if you do that, you have you will have consequences. So um, if you guys remember Mr. Dred Scott, Dred Scott is still alive during this time frame. And he's going to be so happy that he has granted his citizenship. So remember I told you that he will be alive for this to be um, seen. So he is still alive at this time to, at, in 1868. All right, moving on to our next slide, which is our 15th Amendment. You now have the right to vote. So in 1870, it allows um, African Americans the right to vote. The government cannot prevent anyone from voting because of race, color, or previous conditions. All right. Now, one more thing you need to emphasize it only allowed all African American men the right to vote. So white women, African American women did not have the right to vote during this time. So African Americans, uh, men, were actually given more power than white women back then. So remember, 1870, women don't get the right to vote till 18, 1920s. So anyways, just wanted to let you guys know. A good way to always remember the 15th Amendment, always remember the Roman numeral of the 15th is going to be a V, right? The five, the, I'm sorry, not the 15, but the five. The five for Roman numeral for five is a V. So the Roman numeral, that can stand for voting, all right? So voters, you can vote. Only all African-American men. Now, my next question to you is this, all right? So if you guys got to think about it, um, let me see if I can show it to you. Um, so the next one says, uh, wait a second, in the 1800s, weren't women fighting for suffrage that is correct so how do you think women felt about the 15th amendment i mean a lot of women you know like the elizabeth katie stanson or susan b anthony these women are super angry that they don't even have the right to vote and african-american men are given the right to vote before them uh, but my next question is this all right i'm gonna go back i'm sorry to this to this part this slide do you think southern white men or southern Southerners want to give these three amendments, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, to these former slaves. I mean, they obviously don't think African Americans are treated equally to them. They don't want to be treated equally to them. They want them to be under them. So that's the next question for tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to be talking more in depth what these white people are going to do to these African Americans to prevent them the right to vote. Like the KKK, like I said, these organization was there to threaten and... I guess intimidate these black men so they won't vote. Some say that they wouldn't have a gun behind their head when they're pull, putting their ballots. Ballots means voting. When they're placing their ballots, there will be a white man behind them with a gun to their head saying, you better vote for the Democratic Party, sir. Like things like that. So this is what's happening. We're going to go more in details tomorrow about the laws that the South was doing. Because remember, after 1877, everybody leaves the South. All the Union soldiers leave. The Freedmen's Bureau leave. So there's nobody really there to protect these African-Americans in the South. So start thinking about that for tomorrow's lesson. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow we're talking about how the black um, the blacks were treated unfairly in the southern co uh, counties and the southern states of America. So once again, just keep that in mind for tomorrow's lesson.